Obviously, it's important to get shots by themselves looking good. But one of the main points of color grading is to get shots to flow and be more consistent shot to shot as to not distract your audience. Well, color, of course, is an important thing to match, and we'll talk about that in a later movie in this chapter. When it comes to shot matching, contrast matching should be your first stop. And the reason I say that is because our eyes are more sensitive to light than they are to color. Matching white, black, and mid-tone contrast is essential. When these things don't match, audiences are more likely to notice. And they'll notice these mismatches more then they'll notice slight or even medium-sized color mismatches. While trained eyes can help in detecting contrast and exposure matching issues, a few of the scopes we've learned about provide hard evidence and a visual way of seeing any mismatches and providing guidance for fixing two disparate shots. Here in our project, I have 0602 matching shots contrast opened up, this second shot is a different take that hadn't been pre-graded or pre-processed, and you can see that it's really kind of flat and desaturated compared to this first shot. Now, we'll take a look at the color side of things later on. For now, in this movie, I'm only concerned about the exposure or the contrast matching between these two shots. Let me open up my scopes, and let's go into our one-up view here to look at the waveform. And I'm going to make sure my waveform is set to Luma only so I can see just the brightness information about the shot. Again, you can do that by clicking on the configuration options for the waveform and making sure that this first button is not illuminated. When it's not illuminated, you'll be showing the Luma portion of the signal only on the waveform. So looking at this, I can see that I have my peak whites right here, maybe around 1,000 or so on the 10-bit scale, maybe 10, 15 and they appear to be clipping out just a little bit at the top here. Down at the bottom of the trace, I have nothing that's being represented as true black. The lowest portion of the signal is right here, maybe around 50, 25, 50, 75, somewhere in that area right there. And then the bulk of the exposure in the shot is actually kind of low. It's kind of centered right here, maybe around 384 or so. Let's go to the next shot down in the sequence. Totally different story here. I have very narrow contrast on this shot compared to the first shot. Remember, here on the first shot, contrast is measured as the difference between the darkest portions and the brightest portions of the shot. Here, there's quite a bit of contrast. On the second shot, most of my trace is right here in the middle of the waveform. And this, of course, is because this shot was recorded logarithmically on a Blackmagic cinema camera. So it's a log shot, so I expect this type of sort of overall contrast and exposure a very narrow band. Now, what I'm gonna do is go back to the first shot and I'm gonna sort of make a mental snapshot of that before I start grading it. Okay, so I have my, most of my blacks down here, not have a whole lot of true black, and not a lot of true white. Okay, that's good. I'm gonna close the scope temporarily and I'm just gonna do this by eye to begin with. I'm just gonna increase my black level just a touch there and I'm gonna increase my highlights just a touch I'm actually gonna darken up my midtones just like that. Okay, let me bring my scopes back up. So you can see what I've done. I've kind of expanded the contrast, and I did this a little bit in a stylistic way. I crushed my blacks a little bit, meaning that I pushed my black level pretty far down on the waveform. So you can see it kind of starting to bunch together right here in the lower right-hand corner. That's this area over here. Totally fine with that. I kind of want a nice deep black. Additionally, I expanded my highlights out, so I now have that highlight really pushing 1023. And you could say that's even clipping out, but I actually kind of like that. It gives this nice sort of glowy detail to the windows. Kind of feels a little bit ethereal, a little dreamlike. All right, so that's good. So now that I've done sort of an initial grade with contrast on this first shot, I want to be able to quickly compare what I've done here to the next shot down. Of course, I can do that by just going to the next shot but you're gonna find yourself getting really sick and tired of going back and forth between shots like this dozens of times. So when it comes to contrast matching, after I've done the initial contrast setting on the first shot, what I'm gonna do is close my scopes and get out of my enhanced viewer, and I'm gonna right click on the actual shot here, and I'm gonna to choose to grab a still. A still in Resolve, of course, contains the grade, and it also contains sort of a representative image of that shot. I'm then gonna come down to the second shot, 
and I'm gonna double click on the actual still. I'll go back to my enhanced viewer, and now you can see that I can wipe between these two. And this is gonna make it much easier to see how the sort of contrast and overall levels compare between these two shots. Now right now, they don't compare well at all. So I'll bring my scopes back up. And the cool thing about sort of the viewer here when you show a still image is that you can also wipe that on your actual scope itself. So you can see, hey, where are my peak whites? Where are my blacks? Where are my midtones? So obviously right now they don't match. I'll close my scope here and I'll right click again to turn off the reference wipe. And I'll just do by eye, like I did on the first shot, an initial contrast correction. So I'm gonna deepen my blacks up, I'll blow out those whites just a little bit with the gain control here, and then I think I'll deepen my midtones. Let's bring the scopes back up. Okay, that's looking a little bit better and a little more similar to what I had on the first shot. I now have my peak white kind of clipping out there. My blacks are not quite as deep as the first shot, so I'll bring those down. And I think I need to bring down my midtones just a little bit more, something like that. There we go. Okay, so now if I go between these two shots, again, color, I'm not concerned about right now. Clearly, the color is off. But if I look at the overall contrast, we're getting very, very close. And if I go ahead and bring my still back up, I can now wipe between those. And if I look at this on the scopes, here's the first shot. So we have really peaky whites, and then we have some crushed blacks. And if I wipe over to the second shot, we have something very, very similar. Another way of comparing these shots side by side in terms of contrast matching is to do the following. Instead of viewing your reference still, you can turn on split screens. And that's this button right here. So I'll do a split screen, and then I'll select both of these shots down here in the timeline, and I'll enable to see my split screens as selected clips. And if I go back to my larger view, now I can see how I'm doing in terms of matching these together. Again, I'm not concerned about color right now. This one, a little bit more green. This one, a little bit more saturated. I'll fix that. But for now, I think I've done a relatively okay job, if I look at these side by side, of matching their contrast. You might argue that the image on the right has a little higher midtone values, so we could come in and crush those even more like that, and we're getting into a pretty similar spot. Now just keep in mind that we'll have to come back later on with secondary corrections and things like that to fix the skin tone. He's looking a little bit like he's lost in shadow there, and the same thing over with the banjo player here. But in general, I think I got a good initial match, and now I can match the color of these two shots, and then obviously match details. So now that I've got these matching on the waveform, of course I just wanna verify these real quick. I'll switch over to the histogram, and I'm gonna get out of my split screen view. Here we go. Here is the first shot and the second shot. First shot and second shot. So not a perfect match, but I'm in the general ballpark with the overall contrast, and then sort of the placement on my midtones. That's looking pretty good. And then let me switch over to the parade. First shot, second shot, first shot, second shot. Again, the midtones are not exactly matching, but this is where you need to start using your eyes. If I was to deepen up the midtones in this second shot even more, I'm willing to bet it would get even more muddy, which is not something I want. But the contrast is matching pretty well. Next step we need to do is match color. So that's using the Luma waveform and then verifying with the RGB parade and histogram. And that's a great way to match contrast, especially when you combine in the fact that you can use stills and split screens to visually compare shots side by side, and the scopes will show you that split. So now that we've done all that, let's in the next movie match the color of these two shots using the scopes.